Starting at 50% for series completion, you will get Horizon Backstage Pass. Now, as we know, you can use that to redeem the cars that are in the Horizon Backstage. Make sure you go and vote for the cars you want there. At 80%, we have the Fiat Dino. And then moving on to summer at 50%, the Lexus RCF and the beautiful LaFerrari at 80%. For our photo challenge, we have hashtag Ambleside Advent, where you have to take a photo of your car in Ambleside. Now, you might notice there is a uh, T-Rex peeking in the background there. Uh, we'll leave it there. We might come back to that later, but just keep an eye out for that and we'll come back to that. Great, moving on. Um, you have the chance to get the HSV GTSR as well as some other cool stuff. But going to our first new exclusive car it is the Fiat X19. We'll be talking about that later in the stream, but you can win that by completing the above on the half seasonal championship in summer. Moving on to autumn, at 50%, you'll be getting the Formula Drift uh, 777 Corvette, and at 80%, the awesome Ken Block race suit. We also have a uh, brand new weekly Forzafon, the Gymkhana Special, that's built around the Gymkhana 9 Ford Focus RS RX. Uh, for our photo challenge as well, take a photo of any extreme off-road car at the Express North Rail Yard. And a great some, uh, a chance here to get the Holden VL Group A in the Flexion Muscle Trial. And we're bringing a showcase remix back where you have the Camaro versus the train. But we have a brand new exclusive car again here. This is the Hoonigan Bronco. And we'll be talking about that later. But you can get that by completing the Ken Block and Roll Seasonal Championship in Awesome. It's a really, really fun car to drive. So make sure you check that out. Moving on to winter, at 50%, you could get the Volkswagen Notchback, and at 80%, the Toyota GT86. For our photo challenge, it's hashtag old acquaintance, and you've got to take a photo of your car with another player or driver in Edinburgh. Make sure you put these with the hashtag on social media. We love seeing the things that you create. And a chance here to get the Porsche 356 in the Happy New Year trial. And we're bringing another, the Showcase Remix back, which has you playing in Aisha's Taxi against the Bayer Moth as well in Rides to Anywhere. But the Koenigsegg Yesco is here, and you can win that in the Let It Snow Seasonal Championship. This is a car we are so, so excited to bring to Forza Horizon 4, and we cannot wait to talk about that later on in the stream. So, and at 50%, we have another new car, and that is the Alfa Romeo 155, and at 80%, the Bugatti Devo. The photo challenge is hashtag Chem Blockbuster, and you've got to take a photo of any Hoonigan car. And what's great about this one is the only restriction is the car. So you can take this anywhere uh, in the game and have a lot of fun with that one. Uh, again, another chance here to win the Hoonigan Porsche in a retro racing green trial. And last but not least, a whole other. Uh, load of cars there. We've got uh, things like the Porsche 718, the Hoonigan Escort, and uh, also the Klenblock, Klen, Klenblock helmet, which uh, goes very nicely with the, um, the suit you saw in winter, uh, autumn. Uh, it's just slightly off screen, but the monthly rivals will have you racing in the Koenigsegg Yesco as well. So yeah, really, really exciting stuff. Have a little, yeah, have a little tour. <laughs> yeah, so here we are in Forza Vista. Yeah, it's so, so exciting to have this car in the game. Uh, this was unveiled at the Geneva International Motor Show in 2019, and it's the successor to the Ajira RS. So it's kind of taken all the things that made the Ajira great, but improved on that as well. So we've got a redesigned 5-litre twin-turbo V8 engine, and that actually produces um, different brake horsepower depending on the uh, type of fuel you use. So if you're using standard gasoline, you'll get about 12 uh, 1,280 brake horsepower, but if you use um, E85 biofuel, you will get uh, 1,600 brake horsepower. So it, there's an incentive for you. You know, if you mm. want to do things better for the environment, you will get a faster car, which is really cool. Um, what I love about this as well is it's it's road legal. It's it's like you would you would look at this kind of thing, how? But yeah, it is, and it's an absolutely beautiful car. Um, this was actually named after the father of the CEO of Koenigsegg, it's called Yesco. So the fact that the name was, um, there's so much behind the name, you, you can just tell there's going to be so much love that is poured into, um, poured into this car. So yeah, really exciting. Um, another cool thing about this is it's got um, a new 9-speed Koenigsegg light-speed transmission. 
And what cars have done uh, prior to this is when you want to go from, say, gear two to gear six, you have to uh, manually work your way through step by step. Whereas the, um, the ESCO actually predicts the best gear for the player to go into um, as you're driving and automatically goes there. So it's, it's kind of a real synergy of the car and the driver talking to one another to get the most power, um, which I think is really, really cool and shows how um, engineering art uh, can come together to create such mm -hmm. a cool car. Mm -hmm the future um, and uh, as we said this is unlocked at 50 percent uh in winter as well so um yeah super super fun yeah it's an absolute stunner and as you can see it is ridiculously fast but <laughs> exceptional grip as well it's actually um quite drivable i mean i'm probably going to crash it in a moment but <laughs> <laughs> um, don't jinx it more, more drivable than some of the other high performance uh, Kona exec and i guess that comes from the fact you mentioned that it is actually road legal uh yeah and it it feels like you probably wouldn't drive it like this on a public road normally, but um, and the 1975 Fiat X19. So, well, uh, yeah, let's we jump into that. Look, look at that. Look at, look at us like live jumping into the car. It's great. I know, it's so exciting, <laughs> and it's so it's speedy so cool. as well. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks to the, the awesome power of the Xbox Series X, <laughs> we can load into these cars in just a couple of seconds. Plug. Yeah, so this is the the uh, 1975 Fiat X19, not quite as fast. Not quite as fast, but it's still very, very cool. It's got pop-up headlights, which we love. Uh, it's, so this one has uh, around 61 brake horsepower, so it's very, very different to the other one. Um, but what's really cool about this, and we should probably jump back into Forza so Vista, actually, is the, the engine is uh, in the middle. And um, what's great about that is it allow, uh, allows the, the weight distribution to be evenly spaced between the rear and the front of the car, um, so you get a lot of uh, great balance on that. And so it's look. not there where you might have thought it would be. It's actually here. It's actually here. <laughs> <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> With big <laughs> space as space. well. It's a super practical car. Yeah. Given, given how, <laughs> how teeny it is, you've got, you've got storage here, get some golf clubs in there, you've got space here for a picnic basket. Exactly. Oh, uh, what lovely. I love about this as well is the uh, it's actually got a target top that can be taken off and put into the uh, the bonnet in, in real life. So yeah, it's super, super practical. Great job for it. Yeah. Um, All the way back in 1975, <laughs> they were, they had. Uh, next reward car then, we've got the 1992 Alfa Romeo 155 Q4. Oh yes, let's, um, okay. So this one is a, a really cool Alpha. It, it marked the, um, the first car that Alpha produced after they were purchased by Fiat. Um, and some versions of this car, in fact, most versions of this car, people didn't like that much because it was a change for Alpha. Instead of being rear wheel drive, they switched to front wheel drive and people felt that that was kind of a, a betrayal of the Alpha DNA. This version though uh, is all wheel drive, um, which doesn't have that problem. Uh, it's got a two, two, uh, two litre turbo engine, it makes about 190 horsepower for a top speed of about 140 miles an hour. Um, it was also appeared in a few different racing series or at least a, a version of it did. In fact, I'll jump over to the festival to, uh, to talk about that a little more. Um, because it appeared in British touring cars and I think the Italian touring cars, that meant that it had to be homologated. So they had to make a uh, road legal version of the, the racing car. Uh, and because of that, it has a, cool, a, a couple of really awesome body kits. Um, so you can jump in here. So if you bought the car uh, in one of these homologated versions of it, it would have come looking pretty much like you see here. Um, and then in a separate box, they would have handed you uh, a body kit um, that you could then go and have it attached yourself. Um, so I think that is the, that's the Italian one, isn't it? That's the, uh, that's separate, cool. the Italian touring cars. Is that one, it's got a really big splitter on the front, a really gnarly looking splitter on the back, a little uh, box around the exhaust as that's well. so cool. Um, for the BTCC, it was this one, I believe, which again, looks pretty darn cool. Um, you stick a wing on there as well. Again, choice of wings. I think it's that one that goes with this kit. Um, I'll go buy it. Um, yeah. Nice little, nice little bump in performance there, and the car suddenly looks a heck of, heck of a lot. Looks cooler. really cool, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so the Hoonigan uh, Bronco, like uh, Hoonigan are just a, a really uh, fun, um, you know, the, the, the things that they do where they take a car and just have a load of fun with it. And, and we see that here with the uh, the 1974 Ford Bronco. So this is actually Ken Block's uh, wife's car. And you can unlock this by completing the Ken Block and Roll Championship in autumn. 
Uh, what I love about this car is it's really fun to take off roads and sort of uh, jump over things and do danger signs. And that's actually what they've done with it as well. There's a video online where it jumps over a McLaren 720S. And you look at that and think, you know, this is, this is uh, perfect for Horizon for all those kind of reasons. So yeah, a really, really fun car um, that we think you have, a, you know, you really enjoy playing. Um, it's got 435 brake horsepower, it does not 60 in about 7 seconds. But when you consider the actual weight of this car and like how, how big it looks, to go to not 60 in 7 seconds is really, really impressive. So it must be such a fun thing to drive uh, in real life, as it is in Ports and Horizon 4. Um, it's got a, a slew of upgrades. Uh, we've got the supplied 5-litre Coyote Crate V8 engine. We've got 15, 52 wheels with uh, Toyo tyres and um, a six-speed automatic there as well. So, yeah, um, have a lot of fun with this one. Let's see what we can do on the, uh, the drag strip. This is... So when you say it's Mrs. Bond's car, I, I want to believe that like, he just like, took it down to the shop and was like, bang a few upgrades in the thing. <laughs> 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 Go wild. So don't tell you, 111, so fastest one yet. Nice. Fastest one yet. Um, we haven't used the Esco yet, but... Uh, <laughs> That's cheating, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, I think I did go down on the SK. It was just it was, it was over in the blink of an eye. You might not. Oh, really? Did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I didn't even realise you've been um, on the drag strip. That's what's so exciting about our, our this update is that we've got such a wide range of cars and um, all different kinds driving experiences. And you know that's that's what Force Horizon is all about. That freedom to just get in any car that you want to drive and just just have a lot of fun with. So yeah, it's super cool. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, and it truly yeah, is just something for everyone. A couple everyone. more cars a little... Oh, sorry, there, gone. No, no. <laughs> no, you go. I was, go. Oh, I was just going to say, we've got a couple more cars a little later on in the update, but uh, yeah, we over do. to you there. What's, what's next to look at? We'll get to those. Yeah, we'll get to those. Well, we'll have more on the Hoonigan in a bit, but now I really want to know more about Super 7, and I'm sure Super 7... Well, yeah, I mean, there is there is quite a bit to show. There's quite a lot to take in, I think, in that little trailer. Um, <laughs> yeah, it might bit. be easier if we if we show you uh, rather than tell you. So I'm going to hand over to Dave, and Dave can start start us on the, the tour of this feature, of which there are quite a few parts to try and take in. Yes, so as part of this feature, you can create your own challenges and share them with your friends. So I'm going to do that now. You can create a challenge anywhere on the road network. You do that through the post menu or in free roam. Um, and at this point, you have a selection of different challenge types that you can make. So um, we're going to go for a speed trap one because we're on the motorway. It feels quite cool. We're in the ESCO, so let's go for that. Um, I'm going to set this uh, speed trap here. Um, so the ESCO is, is great. It's probably not the best to drive in winter, even though you can unlock it in winter. And uh, I think, <laughs> who put that there? <laughs> Maybe me. Maybe me. And, um, so we're going to change it to summer. And, and at this point, when you're making your challenge, you can really customize the, uh, the kind of ex experience you want just through these settings here. So um, I'm going to go turn off traffic and uh, go from there. At this point, it's going to ask me to uh, select some music. Now, something I think is, is really cool with the way we have you know, such a, a wide range of music is you can really match the music to the gameplay. So we're driving a fast car. It's a speed trap. Uh, let's put some fast music in. So hospital records, drum and bass feels good. Uh, I love this song, Caffeine by Urban Dawn. Uh, it kind of perfectly sums up the experience that I want to create. <laughs> So at this point, I am uh, I'm now going to be setting the score for my uh, my challenge card. So um, let's do that now. So at this point, I um, I drive to the uh, the speed trap that I've just set, and the score that I I hit will be the um, score for the challenge that other people will play mm -hmm. as well. So um, where are we? Let's do that now. So as you can see, we change season and um, just there. A lovely little speed trap. This is, I mean, this is lovely, Dave, but where's all the grandchildren stuff? <laughs> so we, we've seen this before, right? We've seen this before. We've done speed times before. Come on, give us a yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it again. Right. So, what we've done is we've added a new tool called Blueprint Builder, and what that does at the press of a button is I can detach the camera from the car and sort of fly around the world, adding stunts, scenery, and objects to my challenge. For example, <laughs> I can now add, if I want to, I can add a ramp, um, which instantly changes the experience, makes it more interesting and fun. Uh, I have the option to uh, sort of increase the height or decrease the height. I can rotate it, I can pitch it. If I ever get lost, I can just hit the right stick and it will reset it back to where it was. So it's, um, let's add this jump here, maybe just slightly further away from the. Uh, <laughs> the follows there, um, and I want to direct people into this, so I'm just going to put some uh, some chevrons to tell the player, hey, this is a ramp, go into it. So <laughs> okay, what we want players to do is um, game design action, I thought. Game design action, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm actually test driving the things that I've added, so there's no time limit, and I'm free to go in and out of booth and build as much as possible. And here you go, I just jumped over a ramp that was never there before. This is a Forza first, I've gone into the world and I've added a ramp, and I've just driven over it. So really, really cool stuff, and I think, just to make this a bit more exciting as well, let's give, uh, let's have a bit of a 
bit of a, a weeding challenge to this as well, so I'm going to... Okay. Gonna, like, so why you set that up? I'm going to keep questions while you set that up. Um, so this is you just setting up your own challenge right now, your custom challenge. Um, but why, why is it called Super 7? Yes, okay, so I'll, I'll take that one. So um, this is the challenge creator where any player can come in and just set themselves up for custom challenge. They can share that with their friends using the share code system. It will automatically get, it'll appear in other people's worlds, which we'll, again, we'll take a look at in just a moment. But uh, all of these challenges that players create then feed into a feature that's called the Super 7, uh, which is almost like a gauntlet of challenges that you have to take on, where you have to complete seven challenges back to back. And if you can complete those seven community created challenges, then you'll get an awesome exclusive reward. Um, Amazing. Dave here showing off the, uh, the cloning feature. <laughs> yes, um, yeah, cloning feature with the T-Rex. Uh, I, I told you. Dinosaurs. I told you the T-Rex. You're going to get sued by Universal. <laughs> Stop the stream. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it's, it's really easy to just kind of make another instance of, of what you're creating. So if I wanted to create another dinosaur, I hit Y and it just um, creates another instance of that dinosaur. So here we have a, a, a lovely quartet chorus of T-Rexes in the challenge because why wouldn't you do that? Um, yeah. And increase the, the sensation of speed page. Yes, and it's like a chorus, yeah. And fear. Um, exactly. I know you should put these dinosaurs down, but it's not actually adding to your budget at the top, which is quite interesting. You've got six dinosaurs. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so the, um, the way the budget works, obviously there is a, a hard limit of memory. Um, and so everything you do add will increase the, the prop budget, sometimes by a lot, sometimes not by a lot. So if you ever add the, uh, another instance of the same object, it's actually use your budget a lot less, which is why you're seeing it not go up. Yeah, so uh, the first T-Rex would have been a, a reasonable chunk. Mm -hmm. Every subsequent T-Rex is not very much at all. So yeah. if you're wanting to build mm. a big structure out of ramps, then you know, re reusing the same asset multiple times is a very efficient way to do that. Yeah, I'd say for people who make enchantments, that is the most efficient way to get more bang for buck, is to use um, a smaller set of, uh, of props. And you can go take them uh, sort of a lot further. Um, let's add my go to uh, T Rex Ferris wheel combo. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I pretty much put this in every challenge, just like my signature. There you go. Just your calling card. That is, that is it, yeah. You know what it's made by me when it's T-Rex right, so or Fit and Ferris wheel. Um, so whenever I'm done and happy with it, I, I have to set a new score for my challenge. And that's just to prove that what I've made is actually can, can be completed. Um, I'm going to let Mike do that, so, okay. But okay. This is now Fingers a, crossed. This is now a review of Dave's challenge here. I'll be this assessing out whether or not it's fun. And <laughs> the 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 this is a live peer review right now. Yeah. So there you go. So at this point, uh, Mike is, is setting the score for his, his challenge card there. Okay. Um, th these uh, kind of archways are a really good way of um, guiding the player towards that checkpoint if you want to maybe go slightly further away from the driving line. Yeah, quite a few player experience tools, haven't you, that you've added in just to help guide people, as you say, which is nice for people to play exactly. with. Exactly. Uh, and there you go, so you set a speed of 251 miles per hour. So at this point, when you're happy with it, you can, you can set your score if you want to. Uh, you have to give it a, a cool name. Um, I'm going to call it Dino Dash, though. Dino Dash. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> Very good. Dinosaurs. Um, <laughs> and so here you can see kind of a, a brief snapshot of the challenge card that you created. And you can see it's actually created an automatic description, but you can edit that. And kind of, we, we see that as a way to give, for players to give more context to the challenge that they're making. So, um, you know, we'd, we'd recommend people do some, you know, have a lot of fun with that to really kind of set the player up for the kind of experience that they want to make. Uh, speaking so of that, what would you challenge. say makes uh, a good challenge in your eyes? Yes, I think the best thing to do is to think about the, uh, the player experience who is playing your challenge. And there are a lot of things that you can change to really craft a, an emotional experience on the player. You've got the season, you've got the time of day, uh, you've got the weather. Those three things alone can really change the, the, the emotion of a challenge. It could be, if you, you know, driving down the motorway in winter at night time is, um, you know, a completely different experience to spring in a much lower car. Yeah, yeah. And then in, in the forest with a bit of fog at dawn, exactly. suddenly it's, it's really spooky. <laughs> yeah, some, some of the music from the, the classical station can really add to that, like, kind of spooky nature as well. There's, there's, there's just there's little tweaks you can make that can really add a real atmosphere and feeling to the yeah. challenge that wouldn't just be there normally. Um, yeah. One of the great things as well is that when someone takes part in your challenge, they have to do it in your car as it was set up at that exact moment, including livery, including tune. So in our Dino Dash Dodge Den Dinos, if we'd perhaps put you in a, in a Jeep, uh, we could have stuck a Jurassic Park livery on there. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm not saying you have to go and do that, but you could, but you could, it's off you. Yeah. Um, there's, yeah, there's, there's loads of fun stuff you can do. Another one as well is that your character will appear in the opening cinematic of the challenge, dressed as you were when you created the challenge. So if you want to make a, a Christmas challenge, you could put on the Santa suit and Santa hat, and then maybe, I think the suggestion you had before was, um, deliver, I can't deliver a present sweater for, for some reason. For some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you must do that, and that is a challenge that you can kind of, you can fashion that out of that, that character the kind of text that you're able to put in here to give that little bit of description, have that little bit of flavor. Yeah, Santa needs a super car. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. I'm sure the community, you know, we've seen how crazy. So you can earn, um, well, well, we'll jump into it. So the, the Super 7 has its own yes. um, sorry, got it. campaign sort of thread. And let me jump to that now. You can see as you earn influence, you earn some sort of standard rewards, we'll spend some money, but also some very exciting cars, including the Austin 7 and the Triumph TR7. These are both new to Forza, super exciting cars. And I think um, what I love about this, again, in this update, having a, a, a Yesco and a Austin 7 in the same update, it just shows just how much <laughs> variety we have yep. in our um, yeah. in our games. So four brand new to Forza cars in this update, that is. Wow. And a brand new, uh, brand new to Forza feature, which is Blueprint Builder. So, so yeah, many new very things. Very exciting. <laughs> yeah. And both of these cars have seven in their name as well, which is they just do, lovely, they isn't they it? They do. The Austin <laughs> Seven, the Triumph TR Seven. Um, it, it was just that perfect synergy. We couldn't we couldn't pass it up. It was it was very much. <laughs> they got they got the they got the number seven in their name. <laughs> Super Seven. Hang on a second. <laughs> we got, we got magic here. And, uh, yeah. So 
Um, yeah, this is. A, so, yeah, so this one is the, the Austin 7, um, a real um, historic classic piece of, of British motoring and history, mm. really. One of the most important cars in British motoring, motoring history. Um, much like the Ford Model T uh, kind of brought motoring to the masses in the US, it was the Austin 7 that did the same in, in the UK. Uh, this Austin had been around for a while, but a lot of their cars had been expensive, they've been large, they've been, uh, they've been for people that have a bit of cash. Uh, this was their, their first attempt at making a car for, for the normal person. Uh, it originally came about because the government introduced a, a tax on horsepower. So the higher horsepower your car had, the more tax you would pay. And so this <laughs> car was intentionally made to have quite a low horsepower. This particular model has 10. That's 10 horsepower. Uh, there, are, there is a different version that has 7 horsepower. Um, I think it's it's just great, and it speaks uh, to Forza Horizon especially, that in one update we can introduce a car that has 1,600 horsepower and also a car that has 10. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not, <laughs> uh, not and it feels 16. at home here in the streets uh, no, of Edinburgh as well. It does, it does. Seems to it's work. The, uh, yeah, the 1979 uh, TR7. Uh, it's a British sports car manufactured. Um, it kind of started in Speak in Liverpool and kind of worked its way down uh, to Coventry and then ended up in Solly Hole. Um, it's, uh, it's got 92 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in about 12 ish seconds, and top speed of about 108 miles per hour. Um, what I really like about this is that Triumph actually did. Uh, made a lot of revisions on the TR7. So this one, the 1979, was the first uh, to have um, no no roof as well, which is the, the model that we've got in game. Um, so yeah, this, this kind of benefited from um, just a better engine, better performance. Uh, they actually, I think the, the, the design of this was called the, um, <clears throat> The wedge as well, <laughs> which when you look at it look, from that angle, you could definitely <laughs> wedge a, a door shut. Wedge. It's like a cheese wedge. It's like a cheese wedge, yeah. <laughs> Someone oh, make a challenge. Make me hungry. The cheese wedge, <laughs> please. That would be great. I, 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 that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, so this one uh, had its fair share of rally championships as well. Kind of performed on the asphalt uh, rallies, uh, and that's where it did, did its best. It won a few, um, but it wasn't so great on sort of off-road uh, gravel, but it definitely, uh, it, it's still been used in classic rally, uh, asphalt rallies now. So yeah, really, really cool car. And if you just cam uh, pan the camera to the front, I love this, uh, it's a bit, uh, there's like the, the Triumph um, logo, really big and bold there as well, in between those two pop-up headlights. I just think that there's like a real pride about the, the logo. It's like, it's huge. It's huge. And <laughs> it's dinner plate size logo. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really cool. <laughs>